Hi guys, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In this episode, we're traveling to Seattle to take a tour of a century old tugboat that's been renovated into a tiny floating home. Pamela and her family have lived aboard for 25 years and have completely renovated the boat themselves. She's gonna give us a tour of all three levels of their living space and explain what it was like to raise her family on the water. And while filming this tour, we got a visit from an unexpected visitor that sort of stole the spotlight. So make sure you stay tuned because you're not gonna wanna miss this cameo. Hi, I'm Pamela, and this is my liveaboard home, the Zenia Sophia. My husband and I actually uh, moved on to our first boat the day before we were married, and that was 32 years ago. When we wanted to have a second child, the question was, do we move into a house or do we buy a bigger boat? So we were looking through Wooden Boat Magazine and my husband saw the Crusader and he was in love and it was all over. There's a lot of challenges to living on board. Um, the first thing that people think of is that it's a small space. For us, that has never been a problem, but there is weather, making sure that our girls are safe. We also have things like we need to pay marine insurance, which is very expensive, but very important, and you can't moor in a lot of places without it. You know, those are the, the downsides, but for myself, living on board, has been a gift. The serenity of being on the water, of watching the reflections, watching the changes in the weather, of watching all of the wildlife that we have around here, which is simply astounding. I mean, we have everything from eagles and kingfishers, we've got harbor seals. Oh, and then we've got the sea lions. Right now, they've left for the season for the most part. Oh, darn it! <laughs> yeah, I know, you got your nose in the air. Hey! Yeah, get out of here. I'm still here. Oh, jeez Louise. <laughs> But they will line our breakwater and 24-7 they will be bellowing and cackling and crying and all of their noises. But that's what you get. She was born as in 1926 as a tugboat. She is a tugboat, a working tug called the Edward A. Young until 1969. In 69, she became a personal uh, liveaboard home for a family that we happen to know. So when we bought her in 1995, she was a two-masted gaff rig schooner. You can't change the boat's name unless you go through a ceremony. So in 2010, she became the Xenia Sophia. So when we got her, we realized soon that we were gonna be taking down the mast, and that's when we started converting her to what she is now. We had to redo the front of the, the vessel because um, from the last owners, the wood was starting to get very rotted, and we said, rather than redo it in wood, Let's redo it in marine aluminum. My husband is Ulrich Packer. He's a metal sculptor. All of the things that you see, he created. He loves doing the swirl finishes, and who knows how much more aluminum we're gonna end up putting on it. <laughs> it's really great fun to do. 
When we bought her, we just started digging into her and we realized that we had a lot more rot than we thought. We thought that it was gonna be a long haul out of maybe four months, maybe five months. We were hauled out for 21 months. And you have to haul out a minimum of every five years. Um, then you're going to be, one, finding a place to haul out. Uh, the expenses, unless you have deep pockets and you can hire somebody else to do the work, we don't. We do all of our own work. Because she's a tugboat, she's much heavier than she looks. She's 65 feet long and she weighs 60 ton. Now, even though we live on board a boat, we have internet. This is essentially a very large extension cord. And this provides us with all of the amperage that we need for the boats. And we use about 50 amps. Water, we have a water tank that we load up here and that provides us with water for our two showers, for the galley, the kitchen. For black water, we will have a small boat that pulls up next to us and it will put a nozzle right in here and suck out the black water. It means that we can be independent. So when you have a boat that you live on board, the trickiest part is actually finding a place to live, especially for a boat our size. Now, the Port of Seattle has a number of different marinas. We're in Shilshul Marina. They have about 1,400 boats here, and there is a 10% cap on the number of liveaboards because we take a lot more of the infrastructure. We always feel that any of the docks are much safer when they have liveaboards because nothing happens on the dock with a liveaboard on it. All right, now I'm gonna take you on board. We'll start by going on the deck all the way around it. These railings are um, all laminated so that they're really strong and again, We've got the marine aluminum here to give us some strength as well. These are our deck boxes. This is where we have our propane tanks because all of the, um, our stove and our water is propane. So now this is the, one of our most important things that we have on the boat. It serves, of course, as a bit of a lifeboat, but the most important thing is, is that this is what we can take out when we go out crabbing or when we want to just take a nice little trip. As we move back around here, we're going to come back into what is our aft deck. Now this used to be just a flat deck and then we converted it in. This was one of the very first things that Ulrich did was because he wanted to have a brazier. We can have a roaring fire here. We can seat about 10 people around here. This is a, a beautiful wood table that um, Ulrich made for this. And this is one of the spaces that whenever we have a party, Everybody ends up back here, no matter what we do. <laughs> and then we'll, I'll move now into the aft cabin. This is where we sleep. We've got a small hanging locker, otherwise known as a closet. This is one of our heads. Toilet and then the shower and then a little sink. One of the things that when you're looking around here that you have to understand is that everything from the deck on up we have done. This is um, mostly my husband's handiwork. I'm the grunt laborer. I make sure he's got all the tools and the materials. He's the one who puts this all together. So unless it's something that came out of a factory, which oh, very little of this was, we did it. Welcome to the galley. So as you come through here, you'll notice that we've got a lot of curtains that hang in the boat. One of the reasons for that is that on a boat, there is so much moisture that you've got to make sure that there's a lot of air that moves back and forth. Doors seal that much more than a curtain ever will. So we have a lot of curtains. We've got a full spice rack because we need that. We're big cooks. And this is one of the things that we do as much as possible as we do these Lazy Susans because they allow us more storage space. Propane is what runs our stove. This is where our, our dishwasher used to be. We realized we weren't really using it other than when we had big parties and stuff. So we pulled, pulled that out and Ulrich built this 
beautiful, beautiful front. One of the other things I wanted to point out was our wood stove. This is one of the things that helps us keep nice and snugly warm. We have a ton of insulation in the walls. It's a wonderful thing to have, especially in the winter. Okay, next we're gonna go into the pantry and then up into the wheelhouse. One of the first things that we decided was that we needed to have some place to have whatever needed to go there. We've got all of our glassware up here, more of plates and bowls, and then all sorts of different spices. Ulrich decided that he really wanted to have this nice big curve there because we've got the skylight up there. We have as much natural light as we possibly can. One, because we only have 50 amps coming off of the dock and that can be pretty restrictive. And two, simply because it gives it a lot more feeling of, of being outside when you're still inside. So now as we move up, there's the office there. I'm very proud of the fact that on board, I have a washer and a dryer. Then as you move up into the wheelhouse, this is the captain's chair. It is made from various pieces of wood that Ulrich has had in his studio for probably 50 years. He decided that when we needed a, a captain's chair that he was going to throw it all together and, and it's kind of sculptural because of it. One of the other things that he also made was that this is our binnacle. A binnacle is where you have your compass kind of looks like a knight from the Middle Ages, doesn't it? <laughs> and then we just recently redid all of the windows in through here. Um, and then of course we had to do something with the ceiling. So we've got the spokes up here. All right, from here, we're going to go up to the top deck, my favorite place. So this is the, uh, the top deck and a beautiful spot, especially on a day like today. We have such beautiful weather. And the mast here to, on the top of the, the wheelhouse there, that's where we always have a big star for Christmas. And then right after Christmas finishes, we put up a big heart for Valentine's Day and my birthday in February. Because it faces west, we, we've got the Olympic Mountains right there. This is also a great place to just sit and relax. Let's go down below. So here is the lower salon. Um, all of the settees were built in. We've, we used to use this a lot more when our girls lived on board. Now we have our little exercise bike down here. This is where our pellet stove lives and that's what really heats up the boat in the winter months. And then of course you're going to have more storage under each one of these seats. There's more storage. Duck your head because these beams really leave quite a lump on your head. These are the cabins that the girls used to live in when they were growing up on board with us. Now we use them for storage, for you know, walk-in closets. And then more storage back here. This is the lower head with another complete shower. And again, lots of curves. And this is what we call the four peak or the forecastle. And this is where Ulrich and I slept for all of the years that the girls lived on board so that we'd be close. And it, this, we have just refinished doing the marine aluminum up here so it's not completely finished, but it will have the nice wood paneling in here as well. If I could do it all over again, would I do anything differently? I don't think so. In fact, 
We've lived on board for decades now. We are also getting to the point that we're going to be probably moving off of the boat because at a certain point, you just get too old to do one more haul out. But the very first time that I said, I guess we'll have to sell the boat, I had tears in my eyes. It'll be hard and it's not going to be like living on board the Senya Sophia. It'll be something different. It'll be a new face. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more floating homes or tiny home tours, make sure that you subscribe and I will see you soon with another unique home tour. Mm-hmm.